October 18th or 20 in the morning. I'm with Joseph, the night nurse here at the hospital, who is amazing and said he would video me talking about my cancer. So I get up at 4.15 because I'm just checking my pain meds to see if the new long lasting drug will take me through the night. Now, not all cancer patients need pain meds. You're probably wondering, why do you need a pain med if you haven't even started chemo yet? Well, my pain is a little bit different than maybe other cancer patients. One thing I've learned is cancer is very individual and very unique. So I'm gonna to try to tell you stuff I've learned on my nine day journey to understanding I unfortunately have stage four breast cancer and I have no idea how that happened. So when cancer comes, the first thing they wanna do is understand its primary location. So where's that cancer most love you? Well, of course, my cancer loves my breasts. <laughs> they're just like, hey, they're so fun to hang out in. Let's go to Carla's breasts. So it decides to hang out in my right breast. It's like, yeah, this is so cool. It's so fun. And me, I didn't bother noticing because I guess I don't check out my breasts enough. Um, you don't really get a mammogram to your 50s, so I didn't really go down that route. Also, um, you couldn't have felt anything at my breast because my cancer was behind the muscle. So Mr. Cancer was like, let's really fuck her up and go behind the muscle. And then like, nobody will find her and we can just play, 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 play. So then after that, I decided to go visit the other boob because most people want to play with two boobs, right? So it goes over, it's like, ooh, this boob is so cool. Let's stay here. But after a bit, it's like, oh, we're so boring. We're gonna go travel the rest of the body and hang out there. I don't really know where it went next, but I do know that it went to nine places that we know of today. So loved hanging out in my, let's go check out the kidney. Woohoo! did that. Let's go check out under the arm. Oh, it's nice and sweaty and warm and cool. I wanna go there too. Oh wait, there's this cool arm here. Let's check out here and sit a tumor on here. Oh, that's not enough. Let's travel down the body, go to the pelvic. Pelvic, all the dancing. She'll never notice. They don't dance. Sometimes I never noticed. Travel down, where does she want to go? Oh, it's head, no. Gotta go around to the back. Let's give her some back pain. Goes around the back, goes, ooh, this spine, this spine is gonna just make her hurt so bad. This will be so fun to watch. But then it's like, oops, forgot about the skull. <laughs> Gets her up in the skull. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's hanging out in my head space. And I'm like, whoa. So for the last year and a half, I'm like, something's really wrong. I don't know what it is. I get tests, I get an MRI. I actually paid for an MRI in Buffalo because I think I'm going crazy. X-ray, blood tests, no sign of anything. It's all in my head. I'm crazy. That's what I, I I'm trying to say to my, my husband and my family, I think I'm crazy. I, there's something in my body, I can't find it. So it's obviously in my head. So you know what? I obviously have mental health issues. <laughs> Off I go to the psychiatrist and say, I feel like myself, I'm run down, I'm tired, I'm more achy, I don't feel like doing sports anymore, it just hurts too much, and nothing seems good anymore. So, okay, we'll take some of these antidepressants, which are great by the way, I'm pro meds. Problem not solved. But, you know, Carla, keep trying because you don't want to be lazy. I was so lazy, sleeping all the time, hiding out in my room, watching great Netflix. I was like the Netflix binge viewer because I didn't understand what was going on with my body and I didn't know how to talk about it. And I didn't know who to go to. And so I just slowly gave up on it and crawled into a hole and just started to hibernate and watch a lot of TV and do as much as I could and assume that I was going through menopause, assume I was lazy, assume that I, you know, I just didn't know how to appreciate things in life. I wasn't grateful enough. Um, so, of course, I kept on my volunteering, I kept giving back, I thought, give out karma, get karma back, and, but nothing I did seemed to really take this weight off me. Um, so then, in the summertime, summer came, we have a cottage on a big hill, by the end of the summer, I'm always good at running up it. This summer, I couldn't run up it all the time, and I was like, why can't I run up this stupid hill? My back started to give out, started to hurt, oh god my back, everybody has back pain. I talked to everybody I see in the cottage that summer, my parents. 
oh yeah, you gotta exercise, you gotta go for a swim, you gotta relax it, go to the chiropractor, go to the massage. I'm doing everything because my back is starting to shut down. But I don't want to be a complainer. And like, who am I to say what my pain's like? Everybody seems to be living with pain on this everywhere I go. And if my mouth's getting dry now, because your mouth gets really dry after a pain shot, right, Joseph? Mm -hmm. So it's harder for me to speak. So it's not because I'm stupid or dozy, or <laughs> it's because she get a lot of... Yep, that happens. Yeah, taste in your mouth. Um, so anyways, came back to Toronto, because I had to fly back from my page to Toronto. Really bad, got worse, worse, worse. Had an appointment with a pain doctor. After getting x-rays, x-rays proved nothing. Um, collapsed, couldn't get up. I couldn't get up to go to the bathroom. I had to go to the bathroom on the floor in my guess, in my master bedroom with my family around. Um, and I knew that was not a good scene. Called the ambulance, the ambulance came, took me down. I couldn't even move. I was in so much pain that if you touched me, I would cry, but I couldn't even cry because it hurt too much to cry. So I had to just sit there and, and try to breathe. Even breathing hurt to get to the hospital, which would be my I would be like, once I got there, the pain would be gone. I get there, I go to admission. I'm just a back pain person, so I'm put into a corner. And I'm not getting any meds or any look at for almost three hours. I'm dying. I, I literally want to die. I can't communicate because I'm in so much pain. Finally, the nurses, the nurses are my savior in this story because if it wasn't for the nurses in emergency, I don't know what would happen to me that night because they took me out of their wing. One of the head nurses, who was credible, held my hand, talked to me, told me it was going to be okay. I was so scared because I didn't know what was going on. I was left alone for the night in an emergency in a room. The nurse that came in at that particular time did not really give a shit about me. <laughs> she was busy. So they would just tell me to calm down and just meditate the pain. Just to put it in perspective, when I came into the hospital and I saw the pain I was living with, I, I got like a lot of pain meds. Mm -hmm. They were pumping me full and they didn't even know how I could stand. And I've been living with that pain off and on to that intensity a week oh, wow. and up to that three months. And they had to pump me so much of pain pills just to even get me to open my legs because my whole body was tightened. And so the nurse was like, said to the doctor, this isn't normal. Like, it's not normal for her. Like, I'm normal for anyone being in such pain. So then the doctor agrees to admit me for the night. Now I'm part of the hospital pro hospital's problem. I'm no longer emergency problem. The hospital comes down there like, man, we don't have any beds for you. Like, this is so packed. We have 10 people waiting. You're not a priority case. You're a back case. But because you refuse to leave, <laughs> I refuse to leave because I said I can't leave. I can't, I can't get any, I can't move this bed. I didn't want to physically even move like an inch. They said, we will let you stay and tomorrow we will get a, a C scan of you just to have you show you have to go to pain expert. Of course, next day they get the C scan. I see the nurses, the doctors running in circles while they're waiting to come tell me the news. And they came in and they said, well, you have something on your spine to us. We're not sure what it is. It looks like a tumor, but you must be in incredible pain, and we're gonna get pain meds to you right away. And once I heard that, I just thought, oh my God, thank you. And once again, when I moved upstairs, I had these amazing doctors, I, I had these amazing caring people, but at once, I got back in the hands of loving nurses who took me in. So when I got, the, when I got into this ward here, I was in pain, I was scared. I was scared they weren't gonna give me more pain meds, mm -hmm. but the nurses, loved me and took care of me and settled me down and just gave human touch as well as kindness and gave me the, the drugs because um, it was really important and I slowly, you know, within 24 hours, I was comfortable even chit-chatting, just finally. But the hard stuff would become next, all the tests. Because of what was happening to me, I got VIP with everything. I was a VIP. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I got every test within you know, 10 hours at every test imaginable, the most expensive test. And the next day is when they said, we're sorry to tell you, but we think you have breast cancer that has now traveled through your body. 
and you are now in stage four breast cancer. For me, I didn't even know how to respond. I was like, that can't be right. That's not right. I don't, there's no way I would know. My, my family would know. You don't just tell me that I've been living with cancer eating in my body for close to two years. And they said, but didn't you feel something? I was like, I did, but it wasn't loud enough mm -hmm. what it told me. It was like a back pain here, a little bit hard to play hockey here, hard to lift things, but nobody told me that back pain can be a sign of cancer. And when I Googled it, it was like 0, 0, 0 percent of people actually have back pain due to cancer or tumor. So now we've been here since um, maybe two weeks. Let's say Thursday. Mm -hmm. Two weeks today since I got my diagnosis. Oh, okay. And two weeks today since my life has forever changed for now. Al and I at the time were talking about um, Zach finishing up grade 12, what we're gonna do, we're gonna sell the house, are we gonna travel more? Um, what were our five-year goals? And none of them included cancer. Uh, my family has stepped in, my sister has taken over the running of a lot of my stuff at the hospital here. My parents sit here every day. Um, Al is just my knight in shining over armor. It's just been everything to me. All the notes and messages people have sent and emails and videos and I read this amazing book. It's like a Hulk book. <clears throat> Um, and it's always kept here, and Al and I read it at night together. And oh, I wish I had told you, but Diane was cleaning my room before, <laughs> and she went to she went home late. She doesn't like me to get up and do this stuff. Right. It hurts my back. But in there is books, books of hope, and it's all your messages, and people writing to me, and all the videos that people have done, and I had no idea how much support and love I had out there. It, what you guys and everybody has sent to me has made me cry more than getting the cancer because cancer feels very lonely and you feel like you feel almost like like so sad and, and angry why this would happen to you like give me one form of cancer just give me stage one cut my fucking boob off take both with you but god did you have to go all through the body like, did you really have to do that my body's taken me through a stroke. It's taken me through a rare fungal disease, blastomycosis. And now it's taking me through cancer. I don't get it. I'm not sure what all this means, where it leads to what I'm supposed to be doing. But I do know that having goals is really important. So these are my goals for the next year. And I put them up in my hospital room. Oh, nice. Get this under control by Christmas, my birthday. That's December 30th. That means be on my well into my way of chemo. Mm -hmm go to my son's grade 12 graduation, get to our cottage in July, and celebrate my 50th year, celebrate my 50th year in style. And that ring is because somebody else has contacted Joseph that says, I need help. And that's what you guys do around here. That's why you're in here with me at four in the morning. Okay. Well, that, I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.